Have you ever taken a little weekend drive or gone on vacation and wanted a place to store all of those tidbits and mementos that you collect along the way? Well, if so, join me as I create this travel journal, and I think that that will solve your problem. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I like to do a lot of journal making. That's kind of my passion is the journals. But I also get into encaustic wax, and there's just a lot of other things going on around my channel. So if you like that, I hope you'll stop by and give me a like. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button, and of course the notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. So to get started with this travel journal, I'm using a full file folder. We're just going to remove the tabs, and I've cut that to about eight and a half, eight and three quarters inches for the height. For the width, it is just the width of that file folder. I'm going to mark it here at four inches and mark it once again at five. So I'm drawing a pencil line at the four inch mark. I'll do the same at the five inch mark. Just measuring over that one inch and we'll mark it at five inches and then we'll mark it once again at the nine inch mark. The four inch mark is going to create the cover. The four to five inch in between that space will be our spine or where we'll put our pockets as you can see it folds over and then after the nine that will become our flap. So there we are marking the nine. The spine between the four and the five and the flap here on the end. So you can kind of see how this book will be constructed. We're utilizing the file folder folded over for strength, and we'll, we'll glue that together here in a moment. But before we get started, let's take it to the scoreboard, and let's score that four inch line. And you can do this with just a straight edge ruler two and just mark down, down beside it at that four inch mark. I happen to have this scoreboard, so I'm going to use it. I'm going to score it, turn it over, and crease it a bit with my bone folder, and then hit that 5-inch mark as well. Now I want a little bit of room created with that flap when that folds over. So I shall score that at the 9 inch mark. I will score it once again at 9 and a quarter. And then once again at 9 and a half. And that just gives me just a little bit of, of room as you can see because we're going to put those pockets in and, and we'll be filling the pocket, so we want some definition or some expansion, I guess is the word I'm working for. So now I've opened this file folder up and I'm utilizing Yes Paste and a credit card to get that Yes Paste on one side of this open file folder it, so it will adhere together when I fold it back up. And see, you can see that natural fold there. I'm just getting the glue on all the edges, all the uncovered areas, and now I'll fold that over and let that dry and let that glue adhere and set up. Once that's done, I'm taking some black acrylic paint and just covering both sides 
of this file folder. Now you can use black gesso as well. But I want to add some texture. So I'm adding in just a little bit. I'm doing this to the eye and I'll put the actual dimensions of the recipe in the description so you have it. I'm doing it just, I'm winging it. <laughs> so I put in a little bit of baby powder, a little bit of that black acrylic paint, and now I'm adding some glue. Stirring this together will make texture paste. So let's get that stirred up, and I want my texture piece to be black. That's why I added the black acrylic paint. And I just want to get it to a texture that's close to the purchase texture pieces, smooth textured paste that are on the market. I don't want it to drip off of my stick, but I don't want it to be so gloppy that it's difficult to move around either. So I'm going to continue to mix until I think I have the right consistency. And then we'll give it a give it a go. So let's see how this works. We'll pull this through the stencil with the hotel key card, and that is working just fine. We'll set that aside and let it dry, make sure it sets up. And once we've tested it fully, I am going to bring it back and utilize it on this cover. I want to go black on black. I've chosen a stencil, and I'm just dragging it through that stencil with my hotel key card until I like what I have on here. Now, if you will notice, I have already stenciled off screen the front of the cover, and I have added a feather stencil on there as well that you did not see. So we have the stencil that I'm using now, and then that feather stencil. I'm gonna, I've set that aside and let it dry, and you can see how that comes together for the cover. I went to add some additional interest, so I pulled in another stencil. And we'll just add some additional stenciling with the texture paste throughout the outside of this travel journal. And there you go. So once again, I'll let that set up, let it dry. I like to let this dry naturally, a little more than using the heat gun to it. The so heat gun sometimes has a tendency to make that bubble. So we'll set it aside, let it dry naturally, and once dry, we'll come back. And I want to make sure that the edges are covered. So I'm going to trim and cut those corners, round those corners off with my crocodile tool and go across with black black ink. Now I have two colors. I am utilizing a bright aqua green and mixing in a raw umber to darken it a bit. And now I'm just going to messily put that onto this front cover. I'm not going to cover it in totality, but I just want to make sure that I have some of this green color on there to peek through at, on the final result. And that will make a little more sense as, as we get a little further into this video. So I have it on, and now I'm taking my heat tool to it to just dry it up a bit. Once dry, I'm coming back with a fine grit sandpaper and just sanding it down with a very light touch. I don't want to remove my file folder. I just want to kind of get down to the top of that texture paste. So I'm just sanding lightly over the top. 
Now I have a 14 karat gold and I'm subduing that gold with a little bit of that raw umber as well. And I want to go around the edges with this and throughout um, the areas where the green is not, perhaps, and just get some total coverage on that will allow that to dry and come back with that fine grit sandpaper and sand once again. There we go. And the sandpaper just kind of takes off it. it you're getting your texture paste down where you're not going to have any knockoff with use. It gets it down to um, a level where you've removed any of the inconsistencies. And I think it's starting to take shape quite well. Now I have this uh, bronze gilded wax and I'm going to come back over everywhere I have the texture paste and around all of the outside edges. And I just use my my finger to do this. A lot of people put on gloves when they're working with this. I don't. I like to feel um, what I'm working on. But that's my choice, of course. So I'm not advocating, not you know, wearing that gloves. I'm just telling you why, why I don't. So there we have, now we've used the black as our base coat, the bright aqua green mixed with raw umber, the 14 karat gold mixed with raw umber, sanded in between coats, put on the gilded wax, bronze gilded wax. And now it's starting to, to take shape the way I went. Where I feel like I've gotten things a little too thick, I'm going back with that sanding paper and just getting it um, sanded down so that it appeals to, to me. And now I'm utilizing the Stays on Black ink, going back around my edges and just pulling that into the front cover a little bit, that black, getting a little more aggressive on the folds and uh, coming into the edges to kind of frame the entire cover. You can see where the black is standing out a little bit more now and I'm pushing it, like I said before, I'm pushing it down more into into the cover, just darkening, darkening everything up a bit. And now that I have that kind of where I want it, I'm going to set that aside for a minute. And I'm going to make a closure out of chipboard. So I have this little square of chipboard, but I would like a circular closure. So I have this template. I'm just going to draw myself a little circle and kind of cut out a kind of a loose circle. I'm not going to try to make it real perfect. I'm just going to pencil that in, grab my scissors and just trim around the outside edge of that. And you can use, I'm, I'm using chipboard right here, you can use cardboard, um, a button, 
any anything that you choose to make your closure. So now that I have it cut out, I'm going to go ahead and color that the same way I colored everything else. I'm going to sand around the outside edge of it. And then I'm going to give it a coat of the black, the green, the gold, and we'll get that um, looking how it should to appear on the front. Of Grab a bread. and poke my hole where I want that button to be positioned. Stick that brad through, and there you go. So there's the cover. So we just did the little button in the out of chipboard in the same color scheme as the overall book. So now let's work on the inside pages, let's take some of this green that we've mixed up, that bright aqua green and raw umber, spread it thinly on the gel press or the gel plate, and then pull some character stencils in here, just random letters and numbers, and allow that to dry to the touch. Once that is dry, yeah, I put my fingerprint in it now. Once it is dry, I'm going to come back in with that gold and raw umber, 14 karat gold and raw umber mixture, and spread that thinly across. I'm going to add an additional stencil on that and just run my... I'm not pulling any paint up, I'm just adding the characters or stencil impressions into the paint. I'm going to set that aside. I put a sheet of paper on it to pull the print, but I'm going to set it aside and let it dry. And while that is drying a bit, I'm going to come in with the black to kind of cover all the edges and bring the edges in because I will be cutting that gel print that we created and utilizing it as my in sheets here in the inside of this book. You know, I'm making this book, actually, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm making it. My daughter, youngest daughter, just got married, and they are going on a cruise to celebrate. And I am making this travel journal for her to take with her to kind of hold her mementos of that cruise. So there we've dried that to the touch. I guess I didn't put the piece of paper on it, like I said. I dried that to the touch, and now I'm coming back with the uh, 14 karat gold to pull this print. So now we're going to put the paper on it. So we have the three layers here. We have the bright aqua green and raw umber mixture first with a stencil. Then we put the... 14 karat gold and raw umber mixture down with another stencil and now we will pull it with just a plain gold without any mixture and here is what that print 
turns out to be. So I have cut that into the sections of where I want the in sheets, if you will. And we'll place that into position. Little glitter glue and glue that down. So now we have the outside pretty much done. And I think it's looking looking pretty good. I hope you think so as well. So now let's get our um, little piece of, this is a very fine leather. So I'm going to glue this into place. And I'm utilizing the glitter glue. I'm sure you recognize the bottle. And I'm going to set that aside, clamp it down, and let that glue dry. And while that is drying, we'll come back and work on our pocket. So I have cut, you can see I've cut to the height of the book and about four inches in width, two sections of file folder. I have also scored that at one quarter inch. Now for the pockets, I've cut the pocket to the size I want, and I'm going to score it three times on each side, one quarter inch apart. So I'm scoring it one quarter inch intervals here. And the purpose of doing that is to get those into an accordion fold because we want these little pockets to have a little bit of expansion so they're capable of holding more than just one sheet or one little sheet of, of cardstock. So let's secure those with the bone fold. And we'll do that on both sides. And you can see when we put that into position, we'll have a nice little pocket there. Once we glue the bottom down, it will have that accordion fold to just kind of pull out and open up to create some additional space for tickets, mementos, things that you pick up along the way, swizzle sticks, whatever it is you decide to save to remember your trip. So there, that's the basic construction of that pocket. So let's get that decorated. We're going to paint it a solid black and I will do that on both sides. And we'll get both of these pockets with a good coat of black acrylic paint. And I'm just using Liquitec Basics. And we'll also paint the solid black, or two little flaps. Now I haven't edited this video as deeply as I edit others or, or cut out as much, so let me know. If you like that or you prefer prefer the speedier versions, I've not um, 
I've kept it two times instead of four times, so I'm just trying something a little new here. And now I've pulled some scrapbooking paper of maps that I'm going to put on our flaps. I'm going to trim the corners, ink around the outside edge of that. And I've also cut and put that same map on, well, I guess I didn't do the inside of those pockets. Probably should have. You know, it's funny, when you go back and do the voiceover, you, you know, to talk about what you think you should have done instead of what you actually did. So I didn't do the inside of those pockets, but I don't think that will be any harm because I doubt that you'll ever see the inside. So I've glued them down and I've taken a thin line of glue across the bottom to keep that bottom closed and glued up the outside edge of that bottom piece of that accordion fold. Do the same on this one, a little thin line of glue right up that fold and across the bottom. Put that into place and anchor that down with some clamps to make sure that gets glued securely into place. And there we go. We'll set those aside and let those dry. See how they're going to fit? So now that the leather strip has glued in, I decided to go ahead and add some additional security with some masking tape. And I happen to have yellow masking tape of all things. But I'm going to cover that with a little piece of that map paper as well. So we'll put that into place. We'll give it a little touch with the black ink and glue it down. And there. I think that looks good. So we're starting to get there. So it is coming together, and now we just need to add in those two pockets. So they're still drying, and I'm thinking about one more spot that we could add a little tuck spot. So I'm cutting another piece of file folder for the front cover. And I'll decorate that, and we'll get that put into place. There's a lot of thinking going on here. And what am I going to put there? So I think I'm going to make a little um, journal just to lay in, I don't want to glue it down, but to lay it into um, that centerpiece as well. Let's get these flaps in. I'm putting some two-sided tape down the edge of that one quarter inch fold that we had for the pocket flap. And I'll just put that into position. You can see where I put it into position before and pulled it out because I didn't have it in there straight and pulled up some of that black paint but with the adhesive. But 
we are going to cover that up. It will not matter. Let's get that into position. And then we will put the second one into position. And that will finalize this book. As you can see, the front flap is in place with a tuck spot. We have the two pockets that we're putting in right now. We have the little journal that we created out of a piece of file folder and that second gel press print that was pulled and just some um, simple paper on the inside of that and that will just lay in this travel folder. So I'll give you an up-close look of everything as it's finished. I'll give you a little photo montage and, and uh, a bit of music and then I'll join you on the end screen. And that completes this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please hit that subscribe button. And if you found something useful here, please give me a thumbs up. And there is a, another video that I think you might enjoy or that YouTube is recommending that you might enjoy next. So thanks so much for being here. Bye for now.